Good morning. At breakfast, I was telling Bill that I wanted to make some more ornaments and I wanted to make some kind of birds with the clips that could clip onto the tree. And I still have time to drop off more things at the Holiday House and I knew that I already had six egg gourds that had been, had the base coat put on them. And so if I did six more, I could do 12 of something. And what should I do? And you know what he said? That was a really great idea. He said it should be chickens. It should be hens. And I can make a little nest at the bottom with a bit of grapevine, or you could use a little bit of straw. I actually have some straw, but I think it'd be a little bit harder to fashion. It would kind of stick out, but I might be able to do something like that too. Just kind of gather it up in the middle and let it stick out. So if you've got some straw, that would work. If you have grapevines so that would work. I have a couple boas from the store where things cost one dollar and I can use the feathers off of these. I also have some silk leaves, some fall colors and I might be able to use some of those and then I've got a bag of 200, I think it's 200, I hope it's not 500, I think it's 200 of these clips which sounds like a lot but if I do, I mean that's only like 20 different things of 12, right? So I hope you're ready. Hope you've got your tools ready. Hope you've got some quick wood ready and some modeling tools ready. And we're going to make some chickens. I've gathered together, uh, I think 12 egg gourds. And these are already, I've already prepped them. I had six prepped, so I did six more. So I've got six egg gourds. I've got a whole bunch of clips. And I've got some feathers and I have some leaves. So my plan is to make some chicken ornaments. And yeah, I know you're thinking they don't really look like a chicken just yet. They look more like an egg, but we're going to get there. I think we're going to need some quick wood. We're going to need some modeling tools. And what else are you going to need? Uh, some hot glue and maybe you're going to need some little nests to put them on so that the clips won't be as visible but we can fashion those out of could use some grapevine or something like that to do to do those so that is our plan for today we're going to make some chicken Christmas tree ornaments all right are you ready so here is what you're going to want to do first you're going to need a cork and you're going to need your gourds that are already primed and you want to look and see which end you think should be the front of the chicken and I'm going to show you my inspiration piece. My inspiration piece is one of those uh, marigold glass like 1980s from Indiana. The I'm not even sure if they were a butter holder or what they were. Let me show you real quick. Those, one of those. So that's going to be the inspiration. So the first thing is we need to figure out just how long of a neck that you want. And once we get the neck, then we can shape the top. But I don't want to use that much quick wood. If I do 12 of these, that would be like six of these worth of quick wood, which would be an entire tube of quick wood. So I'm just going to take a knife and cut this in half. With cork, you kind of have to roll it. It doesn't really cut like bread. There it goes through. All right, so what you've got now is you've got one edge and then a kind of a rough edge. And the edge that we want to go on the gourd, we're going to need it to fit a little bit better. So what I'm going to try and do is just, let's see if I can show you. I'm just going to clean out. Just kind of make it a little bit concave. So I'm just going to dig a little bit of cork out. Just be careful if you're pushing towards your palm. Be very, very careful that you don't slip. We just want a well for some glue to sit in. And I think we're going to have to put, because these will get knocked off if they fall off the tree. So we're also going to put stubs in. Okay, so this, now you can see it's going to sit very, very going to sit right up against there but what we're also going to do is glue into here and here a little bit of a dowel so that they don't come off and let's see the chicken's neck is back about there 
So there's one ready, and I know that this one fits that, so I'm going to put that together. And I'm going to, as long as I've got the other part of the cork cut, I'm going to do more than one at the same time. So as long as I've got the paints going, and the glue gun going, and the drill going, and all those things going, I might as well make a couple. Because if they come out cute, somebody's going to want one. <laughs> this cord, This cord is so small. I think this one needs to be kind of a medium-ish and I'm looking at my hen again and I'm just making sure that when I really press it down that this is going to meet all around and stand up like a little head and on the example piece there is they do have a bit of a chest in front and then I've got to figure out what we're going to do about the rudder tail because I love it when my chickens have got chicks and they have that big mama rudder tail up all the time here I am here I am babies I love that so there's two ready to go next I need to get some skewers ready so you're going to want to get your skewers ready get some scissors and be ready to break or cut them into the right length all right, I left you looking for corks and looking for skewers. And I looked everywhere for my skewers and I can't find them. And since these are so small, I decided I would pick something that I'm pretty sure you're going to have around the house that you wouldn't have to worry about, and that's toothpicks. We're going to use these instead, okay? So don't worry. If you've got old chopsticks left over from Chinese, these are always worth, always save these, always save these because you can use these to attach all sorts of ears and legs and arms and heads and anything like this that you get, hang on to it, recycle it, use it again. So yeah, I think you've got some toothpicks, you'll be able to use those and I'm cutting the last cork and I did learn something about the corks and you're going to learn it as well and that is that when you cut the corks, really old corks just crumble and the slightly newer ones are a little bit easier to work. And then I'm just, like I said, very carefully just kind of digging in and taking out some of the middle and just leaving the edge. And I'm leaving the edge intact. And so the idea is that when you press against it with the glue on it, it's going to seal all the way around. And we don't have to worry about it showing up. But if I try and press with it like this, there's just too much in there and nowhere for the glue to go. So I'm just making a well for the glue and a softer edge that will compress and hold around. That way I won't have to put quick wood around the base of the chicken's necks. Okay, so I just hollowed it out in there. And it's not perfect all the way around, but when I press down, it's going to get pretty perfect. All right, got a pile of those. Now I can clean this up and move on to the next thing. So while I was selecting the corks, I plugged in my glue gun so we could get going. So this is going to be the next part is the gluing. And these are going to stick in there pretty easily. All right, we're going to need to cut these in half. So you need you need as many of half as many of these as you're doing gourds. Just be really careful. Don't cut your fingers. I guess if you were really desperate, you could use twigs from around the house as well. So we're going to use the pointed end to point into the cork, and we're going to use the blunt end to go into the cords. So next thing, we've got to drill a hole in each of your cords. I'm not sure what your favorite drill is, but mine is definitely my little tiny Ryobi. It's got a light on the front, and it has these click-click interchangeable bits. So you just Click them in and click them out. And I want something about the size. I need a little bit of glue to be able to go in. So I want something a little bit bigger than that. Okay, I think it's going to have to be, wow, you can hardly even see this. It's going to have to be this one, and I'm just going to give it a try and see how it goes. So I have to think about where this head is going to go. So you're going to want to position your cork about where you think you want the head and then kind of eyeball where that ended up. And this is not going to be an exact science. I don't have the exact right size bits. So. 
these egg gourds are pretty tender. You'll be able to wallow that around. I need it big enough that it's going to be firm, but that I could put a little bit of glue and push it in and pull it out, and then when I feel the resistance, aha, perfect. Okay. Better to go smaller first than larger, right? Okay, so each of these, about where I want the head, I need a hole. So you're just going to put your hole, you're just going to put your hole roughly in the center of where you think the head is going to stand up. So the tail will be back here, the head will be there. These are going to be super cute. This is probably not critical. Where it ends up. So each one's going to be a little bit different, right? I kind of think once I've got the drill out, once I've got the paint out, I might as well just keep going and make several. I don't know if you like to make. Do you like to make, do you like to make several, or do you like to just make one or two? It seems like it takes twice as long to make more than one, but it doesn't take 12 times as long. Now, I don't know about you, but I very purposely picked this end for the chest part because I think if it's like this, I don't know, it might have looked too much like a guinea hen. Then again, I'm looking at the inspiration piece and I'm wondering, do you think we should put the tails there instead? Should the head be like this? Or should the head be like this? And that end would be the tail. I think I'm changing my mind. That's going to be for the tail. That works out okay. So I guess the answer is for your gourd, figure out where best is it going to look to have the head and where best is it going to look to have the tail. Since I've changed where I want mine, I'm just going to put the hole directly opposite it like this so that I've got a spot for the tail also. These don't have to be exact. These are going to be folksy. So right about now you should have your hot glue gun. Your glue gun heating up? Your hot glue gun. I guess it's like water heater. You should have your glue gun heating up so that we can attach the head. These are going to go quick. These are going to be fun. And once we get them all built, then you're going to get to do the fun part, which is to figure out how you want to decorate them. That's going to be the most fun part for you. All right, two holes in each. If I can find a size on here, I'll tell you which size uh, it has a number one. <laughs> You'll just have to experiment with your bits and see which one is the right size to match up with the toothpicks. So now I know that on the back side where we put the tail, we've got the same size hole that the toothpick is going to work in, so everything's going to line up beautifully. This is, it's, I should probably to show you this. This is the niftiest thing. It's got a forward, it's got a reverse. It's got some different speeds, slow speed, slower, just kidding. And then the battery goes in the handle, and it's a lithium battery, so it does do that thing where it's about to die. It doesn't let you know. It just stops. But I have a charger, and I have two or three extra batteries, and I just keep one on the charger over here, and when it dies, I swap it out. But this is so nice and light. This might tell us. What size drill bit that was? Nope, it doesn't. A small one. A very small one. Okay, so now you have got your gourd, and you've got your cork, and you've got your toothpicks cut in half. So what we are going to do 
is, right, I'm gonna decide whether I want this one. Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna do them like this. Yeah, what do you think? Pointy in toward the back, kind of like the, the bit of the tail. And I can move this forward or back as I need, so I can pay attention, like if I just got the hole not quite where I want it, I can always move this this way. Move the neck this way or move the neck that way. Okay, first we're going to put a little bit of glue on the pointy end. Then we're going to stick the pointy end into the cork. And that's going to help it stick in there. All right, now this is going to be the tough part. You're going to need to put glue in here, but you also need glue on the end, and we need to be able to wiggle it back and forth. <laughs> And these are pretty long. We need to be able to wiggle it back and forth so that it kind of grabs inside there. So I'm just going to put a bunch of glue in that little well that we made. Although this first one might come out messy, so I just filled the well with glue. Oh, what a mess. Okay, and I'm just going to hold it down. And I got enough glue that it's definitely all in there. And right now it's probably too hot to take any of it off. Oh, that worked out pretty well. Just twirling some of it off. It was too hot to smooth with my finger. But now I can rub off the extra. Okay, so it's very, very sturdy on there. It's not going to come off. The thing is, you know, a lot of times Christmas ornaments fall off of the tree. It happens. And so we're just ready, ready for anything. So I learned my lesson on that one. Not quite so much glue. Okay, so I've got some glue on the pointy end because that's the end I'm stabbing into the cork. And if you don't have the strength to stab it in, then just push down on the cork like that, and that will force that end in. And I'm leaving a lot less this time. Okay, and this is going to be the head up this way. All right, I just did a dry fit. Now I'm putting some glue around there, and ideally I want to be able to push it in and pull it out a little bit and push it back down so that I know that there's some glue on the other end of the... There, I'm just wiping it off real quick. That way I know there's some glue on the other end of that stick. Ideally, that's the plan. Okay. Here's another reason to do multiples, in case you are thinking of doing multiples. You get better, and you get better as you go. So now it's going to go a whole lot faster. Now I'll be able to put the glue there. I learned that I can turn it over. I can push it down. That makes the thing actually, the, what are these things called? Toothpick actually go into the gourd. Okay, I've got enough extra glue kind of like on the little stick. And I'm getting better and better and less and less glue stuck around the edges. Now these gourds are so thin sometimes I'm being very careful to try and hold them in several places as I push because even that much pressure sometimes is enough to break their, um, break their shell. And if you break the shell, then we'll have to do something else with it because it'll have a spot in it. Oh boy, this is getting to be faster and faster. So I'm making sure I'm putting a little bit of glue on the toothpick just to make sure that I can push it in and pull it out and push it in a little bit and know for sure that there is glue under there. I'm just taking a wooden stick, it's a chopstick, and I'm just twirling off the hot, the extra hot glue there. 
and I'm pushing down. And this I can clean off. It'll clean off pretty easily and I can keep using it, but I just twirl it off real fast. I think that's the best lesson of the whole thing is rather than struggle to stick that in there, just press down. And don't worry about these little tendrils. Once you hit it with a heat gun, that'll all go away. A little bit of glue on the toothpick. A little bit of glue around there so that when we press down, it makes contact. So the reason we're putting those studs in, I guess it's kind of like teeth implants. The reason we're doing that is because, you know, Christmas ornaments often fall off the tree. And we want to make sure that these, <laughs> these chickens don't lose their heads. So that would be pretty disappointing if it fell off the tree and it broke and then you had to glue it back yourself. But this way, even if it falls off, that's not the part that's going to break. The head will stay with the, with the chicken part that'll fall off are the delicate parts, like the, uh, what do you call the, the part up on their head? I think this is the best technique I've ever developed. And I think this is how they put teeth into people's jaws. This is a strange one. That toothpick is a little bit bigger than most toothpicks, so I'm just going to open up the hole with my knife because this glue is going to set pretty fast. So I'm twirling them around a little bit, pushing down on them. That one I had to add some more glue to make sure that I melted the glue that was already on there since it took longer. So now I'm just keeping equal pressure all the way around so that their neck meets their body. It's going to be okay if there's a little bit of glue. We can trim it off. I will have to say some of these are working out much better than others. <laughs> and that's the beauty of doing several at a time is you'll get, you'll get an idea of what techniques work really, really good. And you'll perfect your technique. Now, of course, you know that the technique also is any time that you have a neck that doesn't show, do perfectly, put a scarf. <laughs> put a scarf or something around your neck. What you've got now is you've got your egg gourd. You've got this nice and smooth. And so the next thing we need to do to really make this look like a chicken is we're going to go ahead and put on the beak and we're going to put on the little bit of comb or whichever parts that we want on the top. Then we'll paint the whole thing and then we'll put on the tail. Here's what you've got so far. You've got an egg gourd and you've got the head already fleshed out. And I was thinking about how smart it was that we used cork for this rather than quick wood because if these are sitting on a branch if they get too heavy they're going to weight it down but since we're putting them on a clip we don't want it to be so heavy that it would weigh a tree down so that was a good move to keep it nice and light our next step is going to be to roll out some quick wood and make the beak make a little bit of a comb and make whatever facial features we want then it's going to be the really fun part which is going to be the painting of all the designs and they could be lifelike or they could be totally wild designs we'll just we'll do a sample of different kinds and you figure out whichever one that you really like and then we'll put the tails on so here we go time to do some quick one all of my birds now have a beak support and I would imagine that my quick wood is just about the right consistency now it'll be a little bit tougher than it was and so it'll be a little bit easier to sculpt and mold all right hopefully this is not going to look like a um okay i found this on the web very easy to sculpt and mold check it out hopefully this is not going to look like a toucan but definitely look like a chicken and i'm a pretty good idea that it's not going to fall off now i'm going to use one of these 
poker things. I don't even know what they're called to draw the beak. And one thing you don't have to worry about is when you're doing something kind of whimsical like this, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. As long as you get the painting right and the gist of it right, it's going to look good. Okay, now this is weird, but some chickens have short fat beaks and some have longer skinnier ones. And I'm going to have to <laughs> rely on the on the paint job to make it look very much like a chicken. All right. I'm going to put their two little vents right there. I don't think they're called vents, but the two little spots there. And there is the first one done. I'm thinking that that beak is a little short and maybe not pointy enough. And I don't want it to look like a raven. I want it to look like a chicken. But that's kind of difficult. So there we go. A beak. I'm going to set that like this so that it can hardly get to the next because I've got three more to do real quick while well, my quick wood hardens. <laughs> my quick, my slow quick wood. So I'm just sliding it on. These might not fall off at all. I might get lucky. All right, so there's the beak. And now I'll put the little vents in. I think as long as you get a little something there, it's going to look okay. So we'll paint the whole body first, and then we'll paint the beak the different color. That way it can coat everything. And I'm just going to store this one like this so that the beak is sticking up. Now I paid attention to how much quick wood that I cut off to do four, and it was about, about an inch. So now I know how much I need to do the rest, because I've got 12 of these total that I'm working on. I just thought it'd be fun to have a lot of chickens. All right, just using my tool to make it look like a beak. You could use a razor and cut on through. And if you cut on through, you could leave the beak open. I'm just afraid that'd be too delicate and too much going on. This one looks too much like a not like a toucan. Maybe the trick is getting the end really pointy. The two vents. And my last one in this round. I think the trick really is to make the beaks really pointy on the end. So that they don't look like some sort of a tropical bird. It's got to be mushed up there a little bit. And the paint will also help ease that transition line between the beak so it doesn't look quite so stuck on. All right, I want to look at my pictures again and see. Okay, see, I'm looking at a lot of pictures that are, like, cartoony. And the ones that are real chickens really look like this with some red around their eyes. And then maybe the little flaps hanging down. And we can do those out of felt as well if we want. Yeah. Yep. Okay. This is looking good. I think you're really going to like this. Now you've got all your beaks on or your one beak depending on if you're doing one or many and it's time to just wait a little bit. Let these dry really well. Some people like to once they've dealt with quick wood they like to let it dry overnight. That's certainly an option and I have all my little chickies here I'm going to turn you around so that you can see them. All my little chickies here flying everywhere so that they can kind of harden. And those are the pictures that I was looking at trying to figure out what a chicken look actually looks like. So my first set... My first set's definitely hard. I'm going to check and see if they're going to stick or if they're going to fall off. Hopefully they'll stick and stay. You're probably going to wait about, it could be 10 to 15 minutes before they're, before they're really hard. 
and I'm just checking to see and I'm thinking that you know that probably right now it looks kind of like a weird beak but once we get all the other pieces on it's going to look a lot better so the next step we're going to do is we're going to cut the rest of it with the same whatever same base that you use just so that we get a nice smooth finish and that also will help take care of any of the little spots around here where it looks like things are attached I'm going to make sure the beaks are and it feels like they're really staying on very nicely so we won't have to worry about that but we'll do some do some painting and then what you're going to do after that is we're going to be cutting out the I think the top and the bottom out of felt because I think that's going to be a lot lighter and it's just going to keep keep the whole thing you know a little bit lighter and we won't have to attach these just yet they'll be the very last thing to go on the felt here and the tail there so in the interim they're going to look kind of strange but we're going to give solid coat all over and then we're going to do our designs and wouldn't it be cute if I had all of them in an egg crate like all 12 in an egg crate we'll see well as I predicted some of these are not sticking quite as well as I would like so I am going to put a little dot of hot glue in there and then because there is that stud in there that little pin we are not going to have to worry about these beaks ever falling off so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there a little bit of glue here put it back together let it smoosh out just a little bit and no worries at all. What I used on my hands, I used some Avon Care silicone glove, and this just keeps, it just keeps, I only used a tiny little bit, it just keeps the quick wood from sticking to you, because it definitely, as you're rolling it out, it can stick. Plus, it's always good to moisturize your hands, right? So silicone glove, a lot of people swear by this one, I've also used some others, so probably whatever hand cream you have around except this one is really thick and I think that's maybe that's why it works so well I'm going to be testing every one of these beaks and I think you should too just to make sure they're not going to fall off wouldn't it be horrible if uh, you put this as a hostess gift if you're going to someone's house and right as you hand them the ornament <laughs> Oh, hang on, let me glue that back on. That would be awful. So we're, we are definitely going to glue these on. So I'm going to let them, let them really set and then check them all and glue and then paint and then we get to decorate, which is the most fun part. And I'm thinking you could have rhinestones on them. You could have, oh, we could have so much fun decorating these. This is going to be great. Well, I've decided just to be safe, I'm going to pull off every one of these beaks and apply just the tiniest little dot of glue just like that and it squishes around a little bit I'm just going to do it just to be safe because I feel like definitely the beaks could jump off so I'm just actually gently pulling them off just a dot of glue not a whole lot of glue but just enough and when I put it there some of it goes around so that it also attaches it attaches the beak to the <laughs> to the toothpick but it also attaches the beak to the cork so just being super safe Actually, I don't even have to pull them off. I can just pull them out a little and do it like that. And you probably already know the trick with hot glue. If you end up with hot glue strings everywhere, is to just take your your um, heat gun and blast away, and that will take care of all those strings. I don't even have to pull them completely off. I'm just putting a dot in there. Pressing it. And some of them are coming all the way off. That's okay. Now, it's not actually glued. The toothpick is not actually glued into the cork, but I think that the cork will hold it on pretty good. Because if it if it didn't come out then, I think the glue will just hold the whole thing together and that won't be an issue anyway. So the 
beak should not come off the stick because it's got glue and the whole unit should not come off of the head because it's got a little bit of glue pushed up against there as well. That's my plan anyway and it's working very well. Having to take all the beaks off feels strange after going to all the trouble to get them on there. That's okay. And making sure to get them back on straight. All right, last one. Ooh. And there it is. One step closer, and now we get to paint. That's going to be the fun. So first will be just the painting. It said that we have the same color all the way across, which probably doesn't really matter, but it'll save your fancy paint so you won't be having to, you know, do like a coat of your fancy paint getting soaked into the cork. So besides, we want to see what this cork's going to look like. So let's get our paint brushes out now.